In this video, we're going to talk about the pancreas, the adrenal, and the, the vessels that are branches of the soliac trunk. This is the soliac trunk. Soliac trunk supplies the organs that drive from the forgot. Now, this is the left castic artery. This is the splenic artery. This looks a very dorgeous artery in X-ray films. This is the common hepatic artery. Now, let's continue with the splenic artery. Splenic artery gives off left castro-omental artery, which runs along the, look at, along the left half of the greater curvature of the stomach, right here. And there are also short gastric arteries, branches to the splenic artery. They, they supply the fundus of the stomach. This is the left castic artery, which is right here. This artery is the left castic artery, which runs along the left half of the left half of the lesser curvature of the stomach. Now, this is the common hepatic artery. Common hepatic artery terminates with two terminal branches. One is the proper hepatic artery which supplies to the uh, liver and the gallbladder. This is the castroduodenal artery. Now, these structures here form the portal triad, triad, and they are found inside the hepatoduodenal ligament. Inside the hepatoduodenal ligament, we have three structures. Anteriorly to the right, common bile duct, anteriorly to the left, proper hepatic artery, posteriorly in the middle, portal vein, hepatic portal vein. Now, castroduodenal artery gives off this branch. This is the right castroomental artery. Right castroomental artery is this one here. So it runs along the greater curvature of the stomach, greater curvature of the stomach, along the left, uh, I'm sorry, along the right half of the greater curvature of the uh, stomach. This castroduodenal artery runs on the posterior wall of the first part of the duodenum. And duodenal ulcers are common in the first part of the duodenum. If also perforates, penetrates, and then perforates posterior wall of the duodenum, then the castroduodenal artery, this can cause severe bleeding. And castroduodenal artery has other branches. One of them is this one. This is the uh, anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery, which runs anterior to the head of the pancreas. Here is the head of the pancreas. And there is another branch arising from the castor duodenal artery is the posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery which runs posterior to the head of the pancreas. Look at this one. This is the superior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric artery has a branch, actually its first branch from its right side is the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. Inferior pancreatic duodenal artery has a anterior and posterior ramus. Now, the anterior ramus anastomoses with the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. The posterior ramus 
anastomosis with the posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. And also there is another small branch arising from the costal duodenal artery is called the superior duodenal artery. So, uh, anterior, posterior, superior pancreatic duodenal arteries, inferior pancreatic duodenal arteries and its anterior and posterior branches supply the head of the pancreas and also the duodenum. So these are the vessels or the arteries for the duodenum and the head of the pancreas. But the rest of the pancreas is supplied by the splenic artery. There are several branches arising um, from this splenic artery. Now, the first part of the duodenum is intraperitoneal, but the rest of the duodenum is secondary retroperitoneal. The pancreas, its tail is intraperitoneal, but the rest of the pancreas is secondarily retroperitoneal. Now, here is the head of the pancreas. This is the, here is the neck of the pancreas, body of the pancreas, and tail of the pancreas. This is the main pancreatic duct. Here is the main pancreatic duct. This is the accessory pancreatic duct. Sometimes may not exist. Now, what you see up here is the common bile duct. So the common bile duct joins to main pancreatic duct and forms the hepatopancreatic ampulla. This hepatopancreatic ampulla opens into descending or second part of the duodenum and forms a major duodenal papilla, major duodenal papilla. If there is a accessory pancreatic duct, then there is a minor duodenal papilla. But if there is no accessory pancreatic duct, then there is no minor duodenal papilla. Now, here is the Duodenum. Duodenum has four parts. The superior part or the first part is intraperitoneal, is movable, can move along with the stomach. And here is the second part of the uh, duodenum, which has uh, circular, circular folds. These circular folds are not present in the first part of the duodenum. First, up, first, up, first part of the duodenum has a smooth interior surface. And here is the third part or horizontal part of the duodenum. Then you have the ascending or the fourth part of the duodenum. Here is the uh, duodenal jejunal flexure. So the ileum, I'm sorry, the genome continues from here. Now let's look at, now this is the spleen. Well, spleen has no uh, function relating to the digestion. So spleen is not part of the uh, elementary system. But developmentally, spleen has a very close relation, as you see here, with the gastrointestinal system. So we talk about spleen along with the gastrointestinal uh, organs. And the spleen is an intraperitoneal structure and its major function in immune system. And it is the major organ response to uh, or develops immune reaction against the blood-borne antigens. And here, the spleen is in contact with the uh, stomach, in contact with the left kidney on the surface here. Now let's look at uh, the posterior surface of this model. 
But you see here, it is the head of pancreas and snake process of the pancreas. Here is the neck of the pancreas. Between the neck and ancinate process of the pancreas, there is a notch. This is called pancreatic notch. Superior mesenteric vessels, the superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein, pass through this pancreatic notch from posterior uh, part of the pancreas to the anterior uh, part of the pancreas or uh, anterior part of the abdominal cavity. Now, this is the splenic vein. This is the inferior mesenteric vein, which drains the large intestine, venous blood of the large intestine. As you see, superior mesenteric vein, I'm sorry, inferior mesenteric vein joins the splenic vein. Then, splenic vein joins the superior mesenteric vein, which drains the small intestine, and then they form the uh, portal vein, hepatic portal vein. Well, there are, there are other small veins that directly drain into hepatic portal vein. Those include the left castric vein, right castric vein, and cystic vein and the paraumbilical veins. They all drain into this, into this uh, hepatic portal vein. As you see here, this is the secondary retroperitoneal part of the duodenum. This is the common bile duct or the common cola duct. Okay, this is the superior mesenteric artery. These arteries are the jejunal arteries. And down here, you have the ileal arteries.